Welcome to Jersey Fire and Rescue Service Live Fire Sprinkler Demonstration Movie. We hope that the images you're about to see will help you understand and learn about sprinklers in a live fire situation and that any misunderstandings you may have will be dispelled in the images you're about to view. There are many myths about sprinklers and we thought that it was about time that the island understood um, the importance of sprinklers and the benefits of sprinklers. So what we did was we looked at many different buildings to try and find somewhere suitable to construct some rooms, to have one with a sprinkler system fitted and one without. To see the effect of the sprinklers activating in what would be a lounge or a living room um, and to invite guests to view this demonstration. And the construction of the rooms were along the same lines of a modern constructed room within a building, constructed with timber, uh, plasterboard finishes, and over the plasterboard finishes they were wallpapered. They were equipped with all of the furniture you would have within a living room, both identically equipped with the same furniture in the same locations within the two rooms. During the demonstration, both fires were lit simultaneous at the same time. And this room being the room that the sprinkler is installed within, the firefighter then removes himself from the room and the fire freely burns the sofa. At this stage, the hot gases are going up into the, to the air and to the ceiling and the temperature is increasing within the room. And up here on the, on the, the top of the shot, you can see here a disc, a flush disc, which sits on the ceiling, which conceals the sprinkler head. The sprinkler head is fitted in the void in the ceiling and the disc which sits there at the top falls away at approximately 58 degrees. There it's just gone, you've just seen it fall away, it's now down onto the carpet and what happens is now the sprinkler head drops down into the room um, proud of the plasterboard ceiling and at 68 degrees when the ceiling temperature reaches 68 degrees the sprinkler will activate and as you'll see shortly the effect of the sprinkler activating there are two heads in this room, only one actually activated in this event and this fire, which was the head closest to the sofa, which is often the case. There we go, the sprinkler head's now activating, discharging water under high pressure, and as you can see now, the sofa has been extinguished within a matter of seconds. The water has an extreme cooling effect both on the fire and on the smoke that's being emitted from the combustion of the fire within the sofa. Okay, what we have here now is the, the room alongside the room that has the sprinkler heads within it. This room doesn't have any form of sprinklers at all. The fire, as you can see, is being ignited by uh, one of the firefighters in exactly the same place as the fire in the room adjoining this one. And the fire here is allowed to grow um, in the normal manner that it would do in in a living room, in a lounge. What you'll soon see up here is you'll soon see the area up above start to get darker as the smoke climbs the walls across the ceiling and then to the fire as we can see the smoke layer now coming down to this low level and as can be clearly seen here after about five minutes being within a room such as this is now clearly unsurvivable even at floor level. What shortly happens is the radiated heat we have from the smoke layer pushing down on the combustible surfaces down below it has different effects on different materials. The, we call it the mushrooming effect where, where it creates a layer across the top of the ceiling and then it comes down lower and lower and lower into the room. At the same time what happens is the fire discharges hot gases that are unburnt into this smoke layer that you will see the pockets of gases that are in the smoke layer at different stages of the fire, they ignite. This table here is made of wood and what happens is around about 500 degrees or just below that the timber starts to decompose. It pyrolyzes, it's called pyrolyzation. As you'll soon see vapors start to appear from the surface of the table. That is the decomposition of the structure of the, the timber and the pyrolyzation means that what happens is the vapours that are coming from the table of it decomposing will eventually go up into the smoke plume and will add 
to the volume of the fire, which will eventually combust and ignite. Here we have now the smoke smoking off of the table. This is caused by the radiated heat from the smoke plume and the close proximity of the fire that's growing, coming down onto the room and heating all the other elements, the combustible elements within the room. What we have here is this blanket that is, that is on this sofa. The effect of the heat radiating down on this blanket causes it to paralyze itself. And due to the chemical decomposition of the blanket, what happens is it has this effect where it starts drawing up on itself and shrinks. What we have here is the failing of the windows to the room. Once the windows fell to the room, you see the effect on the fire. We get a different behavior of the fire, as is clearly visible once it is vented. You can see now the visibility is almost reduced completely now, even at floor level. There we have the curtain now dropping in front of the, uh, the, the camera. And here, what happens here is we have what's called flashover. And this is the stage where we lose the webcam due to fire. The message had been clearly put across that some nine minutes earlier, the room with the sprinklers in, the fire had already been extinguished. And the, the fire was isolated solely to the sofa, as can be seen in, in the footage, whereas the fire in the room that didn't have any sprinklers installed was destroyed. Fully destroyed. There are many myths about sprinklers which we would like to dispel, which stop sprinkler systems being fitted into buildings each year. One of those myths is sprinklers operate accidentally. There is a 1 in 500,000 chance of accidental operation through damage per year of service, and the chance of accidental discharge of water due to manufacturing defects is 1 in 14 million per year of service. Another myth is sprinklers operate when smoke detectors go off. Sprinklers are not triggered by smoke, they operate as a result of high temperatures that can only be produced by genuine fire. Action movies, dramas and adverts would have you believe sprinklers operate together. Most fires cause only one sprinkler head to operate. If more than one operates, this is due to the size of the fire and the need for more heads to operate to suppress and control it. Skeptics say sprinklers cause more damage than the fire. A fire in a building protected by a sprinkler system will be extinguished at an early stage due to the automatic operation that will suppress and control the fire. In some cases, the fire may even be extinguished before firefighters arrive. A single sprinkler head uses approximately 60 litres of water per minute. Fires that develop and require the fire service to respond will often result in 10,000 times more water being used. It is often thought that after a sprinkler is operated, occupants of the business or home where the sprinkler is operated will have to leave for long periods of time for repairs to take place. This is untrue. A building protected by sprinklers stands to be returned to normal far sooner because the fire will be smaller and less water will be used to extinguish it. Businesses are often up and running the following day. In a home or business environment, some people say sprinklers are unsightly. Modern domestic and commercial, non-industrial sprinkler heads can benefit from flush fitting, with only a small disc visible on the ceiling. Plastic pipework is concealed in ceiling voids. And there's the myth, sprinklers can't be retrofitted into buildings. Modern sprinkler systems can be cost-effectively retrofitted, something that has been achieved on many occasions. It is also thought sprinklers can be problematic and expensive to maintain. Although they are automatic systems, they are relatively simple with few moving parts and require very little maintenance. And finally, some people would say sprinklers are subject to malicious damage or vandalism. Far more damage is caused by starting a fire or flooding a building by leaving taps running and drains blocked. 
I hope this movie has gone some way to dispelling some of the myths you may have about sprinklers. Thank you for watching.